All right, what's going on, guys? Let me get right into this. So, for those of you who checked out my video titled uh, How to uh, Collect and Invest in Comic Books, that video was based around a, another video that I saw a YouTuber do uh, that was under the same premise, but I disagreed with a lot of what he was saying. Some of it I agree with, but I, I thought it was very flawed and, and um, generalized. <clears throat> so if you haven't watched that video, please, guys, go check it out. I posted it maybe, what, two weeks ago, um, and I really break down the fact that, no, we shouldn't just invest in silver age and you can't generalize silver age as books that are worth a whole bunch of money because like i said in that video i can go to any comic book store and get some nice mid-grade silver age books for under 10 bucks so he actually replied to me today and much much respect to this guy i'm not trying to bash this guy he actually replied replied to me very respectfully and i appreciate him being open to having a positive argument argumentative debate here um but he did say you know uh there's more of a, a of a volatility in modern books which has some truth to it but still um if, if there's there's a threshold in, in in any market usually when there is a something on the market that's gaining value most likely it's going to go through ebb and flows, which are healthy. Any market does that. You see climb high climbs and you'll see drop-offs. If a market never did that, it's going to crash. So the ebb and flow was normal. And I use New Mutants 98 as an example. This book was gaining ground with a lot of the movie hype when Deadpool, the first Deadpool came out. After the hype went down, there was a drop. But that drop hit a threshold and it never went down anywhere close to what it was before the movie hype. And ever since this drop, it's been slowly going up again. So it's like you take 10 steps up, you take two steps down, you take 10 steps up, you take three steps down, nine steps up, you still gradually grow and you never, you will never really lose on your investment. Now, I'm sorry just for sticking this video in front of a screen here with all these words, but um, that hopefully what I'm saying is, is, bringing you guys in enough to uh, be very interested and invested in what I'm saying. Here's the point that I wanted to make to you guys and that I made to him, and it's in this paragraph uh, right here. Check this out, guys. I'm not going to read the paragraph word for word, but I I'm going to speak on this. Okay. If if somebody had, well, let me just say, I made the argument that not everybody has $50,000, $100,000 to go buy Amazing Fantasy 15 or Avengers number one. You know, so, you know, we like to take a hundred or a couple hundred dollars every month from our paychecks and, you know, maybe buy some speculation modern books or some nice, you know, uh, Copper Age books. But here's the thing. If you did, when you talk about rate of return, let's look at over the last five years, okay? Amazing Spider-Man number one has had a rate of return of about, what, 7%. Now that 7%, is about four thousand dollars so it's a hefty uh lump sum in terms of dollar amount but you would have had to put up about sixty five thousand dollars in the first place okay but for, for those of us that can only spend a couple hundred dollars at a time if you would have bought amazing spider-man 300 five years ago you would have paid probably 100 120 dollars for a near mint copy um and your uh your percentage and return on investment is going to be way more than that seven percent it's, what, what does it say here? It's a 350% return because now that book is going for no less than $400. And I've even seen it higher on, on eBay now. Um, it, it's continuing to go up. So let's break that down in dollar amount. If you buy one book that's an Amazing Spider-Man number one at, at about $65,000 five years ago, you'd get $4,000 in rate of uh, return on investment. If you would have bought one, Amazing Spider-Man 300 for 120 bucks. You would have had a return on investment of um, three about 360 dollars. That 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 matches nothing to the 4,000 dollars, even though the percentage is much higher. But check this out: if somebody did, and if you're sitting in 2013, and you had 65,000 dollars to invest. What would you have rather done? Think about that. Or don't even read what I wrote here yet. 
Think about this without even seeing this. If you had $65,000 to invest in the year 2016 and you had to invest in comic books, would you have, would you buy an amazing Spider-Man number one or would you buy 541 amazing Spider-Man 300s? Think about that. One Amazing Spider-Man number one or 500 and because at that time at a, about $120 a piece, you could have gotten 541 Amazing Spider-Man 300s. Now I'm going to tell you which one you should have invested in. You should have invested in the 541, 000, 541 Amazing Spider-Man 300s and I'm going to tell you why. Because if you would have put all your eggs in one basket and purchased that Amazing Spider-Man number one, that amazing, awesome, rare, low print. And this is again, this is in a this is in a near mint condition, even for a, for a Silver Age book. Um, it's at a nine point four. You would have had a beautiful Silver Age key book, but your return on investment today, if you would have sold that book today, you would have only made four thousand dollars on your investment. If you would have purchased 541 Amazing Spider-Man 300s, you would have made uh, $194,000. Excuse me, let me say that again. $194,760 on your investment. So what that means is, if you spent the $65,000 you would have sold them for about $260,000. Your return on investment would have been 194000 Can you believe that? Now compare 194000 to 4000 So tell me not to invest in modern books. If you would have invested in modern books five years ago in this modern book, you would have blown out investing in the Amazing Spider-Man number one out of the water. You probably, you may be able to retire on a, a, almost a quarter million dollars, $200,000 right there. That's retirement. $4,000, that's that's a two-week vacation. <laughs> so again, guys, um, much respect to this YouTuber. This is, this is a positive, friendly argument. You know, where, you know, we're just, we're, we're, we're going at it for the love of comic books to share our knowledge and, uh, you, you know, it's all respect, but, um, you know, you have to be careful with the modern market. You have to be more careful and smarter with the modern market than you do Silver Age in a sense, because yeah, a lot of these common books that are released, you know, like I said before, you pay three ninety nine dollars when they come out a month or two later, they're, they're in the dollar bins. But if you know what you're doing, if you know what you're doing, you have a huge chance of flipping a much larger return on investment on modern books. So I hope you guys can see the brilliance in this. I hope you guys can see, um, you know, they, they, this is this is not some scheme or some pyramid uh, scheme here. This this is all facts based on economics and supply and demand and and fine and basic elements of finance so think about that guys i want to know how many of you without knowing all these numbers i, I want to know how many of you would have took the amazing spider-man number one next to 500 copies of amazing spider-man number 300 so <laughs> let me hear your thoughts guys thanks for tuning in again um Chime in at the comments. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Thank you for watching, and until next time.